Well, hello, my students. I hope things are going well. I thought maybe you review this way, and since it's more one on one, <coughs> you kind of see how you're doing. But first, this episode is dedicated to the paper towel. Ooh, looky there. When you make a mess, it's better than using your shirt. So let me do this. Write those two problems down. Now write this one down. Then turn off the video and do the problems and then turn it back on. <coughs> Excuse me. So, okay, good. So remember, absolute value has two parts. You write it without the absolute value, then you take the opposite. Now, technically, we're supposed to put the word or there, but we'll live. So divide by 2, divide by negative 2. Hey, that's not too bad. This one. So 6 minus x uh, equals 9, or the opposite A 6 minus x equals 9. So subtract 6, take the opposite, uh, here distribute the negatives, minus 6 plus x equals 9, so add 6, yay, and then this one, let's bring it over, so it's 3x minus 6 equals 21, or... The opposite, I'm going to skip a step here and just multiply this by negative 1. So it would be minus 3x plus 6. So I skipped a step there. I just distributed the negative right away. So here this would be 3x equals 27. So x equals 9. This would be minus 3x equals subtract 6 from both sides. That's 15. Divide by negative 3. That would be x equals negative 5. Let's check it out. 9 times 3 is 27. Minus 6 is 21. Absolute value 21 is 21. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Minus 6 is negative 21. Absolute value is positive 21. Okay, so write down the problems for problem 2. Okay, let me move this. Doopy doo, there's four problems. Now go ahead and do them. So stop the video. Okay. So, we have x is negative 3, y is negative 6. So, it would be negative 3 times negative 6 would be the absolute value of 18, which is 18. This one, minus 10 minus the absolute value of negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3, absolute value always makes it positive. So, it would be minus 10 minus 3. Because the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, but the opposite is negative 3. So that would be minus 13. This one, negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 6. This would be positive 6. That's parentheses now. That's not absolute value anymore. So that would be negative 18. And this one, the absolute value of negative 3 minus, minus from that, negative 6, doink. Now, uh, negative 3 minus minus is plus 6, so that would be the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Whew. Okay, now, I have two equations. I want you to find the x and y intercept and graph it. Uh, stop the video and do it now. <laughs> okay, I'm just right down to x-intercept and y-intercept. So here, the x-intercept, we put 0 in for y, so x equals 4. y-intercept, you put 0 in for x, so minus 2 times what is 4? That would be minus 2. So you put a dot at negative 2, put a dot at 4, connect the dots... We Okay, this one. Okay, y-intercept, put 0 in for x, so cross that out, it'd be negative 1. Now, x-intercept's a little bit more challenging. You put 0 in for y, so we actually have to solve this little statement here, this equation. Add 1 and multiply by 2. So 2 equals x. 
So I have two. I have negative one as my liners up. Whee! Okay, wait a minute. We're not done, though. Flippy, flippy, flippy. Two more. I want you to graph by finding the slope and the y-intercept. Turn me off. Okay. So this one's already solved for y, so the y-intercept's negative 1. The slope is 2. So it's negative 1. Up 2, right 1. Right up 2 or right 1. Or you could go down to left one. So we This one. <clears throat> I'm going to solve for y. So we subtract 3x from both sides. And then divide by negative 2. So it's 3 halves x minus 2 if you divide both by negative 2. So the y-intercept's negative 2. The slope is 3 halves. So it's 1, 2, 3 over 2. 1, 2, 3 over 2. Oh, perfect. Okay, next group of problems. There's three of them. Solve for x. So write those down. Now I'm going to move this over. Write that down. Solve. Okay, so to solve for x, we get it by itself. So I'm going to subtract by from both sides. So bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I entertain myself. Now I want to get the x by itself. I want a 1 in front of it, so I'm going to divide by a. So x equals c minus by over a. This one, add m to both sides, so abx equals m plus n, then divide both sides by ab. Good. Now this one. Oh, I have a fraction equal fraction, so cross multiply. A n equals m x. And I want x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by m. So a n over m equals x. Did that quick, I think. Now last one. Find the arithmetic sequence. Write this one down. Now write this one down and find the formula thing. So we go a sub n equals the starting point, which is 7, plus n minus 1, times the change in value, which is 2. We're going up by 2 each time. So a sub n equals 7 plus 2 n minus 2. So a sub n equals uh, 2 n plus 5. So notice if I said what's in the fourth place, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5 is 13. 1, 2, 3, 4 spot. Okay, this one. Last problem. Starting value plus n minus 1 times the change. Well, we're going down by 3, so it would be multiplied to negative 3. So it would be 10 plus negative 3n plus 3. So it equals negative 3n plus 13. Whew, I'm wore out. Well, we're going to do some more fun in a minute. Just hang on.